Regal Cinemas have decided to join AMC in their fight against Universal and said they will not show their movies, kind of, sort of, m maybe not really, but they certainly agree with AMC, at least on a more tactful level. So anyway, hey everyone, this is Kevin, your failed journalist, and if, hey, if this is your first time here and you want to see daily news updates or near daily news updates on the movies, entertainment, all that jazz, click the subscribe button and ring that bell notification for more daily content. So anyway, we reported, well I didn't report, but I discussed yesterday what everyone on YouTube is talking about who like movies. The fact that AMC and Universal are essentially in a giant, giant pissing match. Now then, I'm seeing more often than not a lot of movies saying like, you know, the business model is going to change or this is the end of movie theaters, all because Trolls World Tour, you know, made about $100 million on premium video on demand. Now here's the thing. Obviously, you can believe what you want. Obviously, we have opinions. We're on sides. I am definitely in the theater side on this one. I think the theater experience needs to be preserved. I think they make way more money on the theatrical experience. And heck, even the numbers themselves from Trolls actually back it up. John Campion was breaking that out today. And you know what? Trolls, despite making $95 million, more or less, well, Universal is going to lose about $53 million. Now, it could still go a little farther, but they're going to take a bath on this movie. What's more, as some people are overlooking, yeah, this movie did very well, but the straight-to-digital or almost straight-to-digital releases of Onward didn't do very well. The straight-to-almost-digital Sonic the Hedgehog didn't do particularly great. What about Emma, The Hunt, and uh, uh, The Invisible Man? That's what it was. They didn't do very well on premium on-demand with 24 48-hour rentals for $20. Trolls was a unique situation where you had a movie that appealed to kids, particularly families, and we've been cooped up. There's been nothing new to watch all this time. And hey, for $20, you can rent Trolls World Tour and keep the kids happy for 90 minutes, maybe a little bit more if you let them play it on repeat for the next 48 hours. They had all the attention, all the eyeballs, Everyone cooped inside, not doing anything, and less than $100 million was all they could muster. I mean, really, when you think about it, it's really not that much of a story. And the story is really that what AMC, not AMC, what Universal saw in this is like, hey, it's not going to replace, you know, the theatrical experience, but you know what? On the second, third, and fourth weekend, we could get a bigger cut of the movie. Because here's the thing. The 20% that Universal gets to keep from Trolls is an average. Um, it depends on which service you buy it from. If you buy it from Amazon, you're going to pay a much... Uh, Amazon takes a very small fee. If you take it, if you sell it on Apple, Apple takes like at least a 30-35% cut. So it depends. It averages to 20%. Now, had Trolls opened with $50 million in the theaters as opposed to digital, Universal would have kept 90% of that, more or less. Because the theaters have a sliding scale. Opening weekend, movie studios get the most, and the longer it stays in theaters, the more of a cut the theaters get. So it averages to about half, but really, when Avengers opens to $350 million opening weekend, Disney's keeping more than $300 million of that. So let's keep that in mind. Here's the thing. It kind of worked out about the same. But in these times of trying periods, this trying period, I should say, every studio out there, every company is trying to cling on to good news. Universal is losing money on Trolls. They're probably not going to profit. They had the entire world's attention and they could not produce the numbers that a theatrical release would have normally shown. The original Trolls movie, by the way, made a heck of a lot more money. A lot of people are reporting that the new one made more money. No, that's not true. The original Trolls has made over $300 million domestically. Well, maybe internationally, but yeah, you, you get the idea. So yeah, the original Trolls movie still made more money. But Universal talked about how great it was. They're taking a victory lap. And hey, in the future, we're going to do this more often. And really what was being said was like, you know, we can get like an extra $20 million 
to ourselves out of this if we don't deal with you, the middleman, our partners. And that's what created the feud. And AMC admittingly did the nuclear option, which was no Universal Studios movies. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, what happens when Regal or Cinemark do this as well? Well, no, that's not going to happen. Because here's the thing. Deadline has reported that Regal owner Cineworld chimes in on the Trolls World Tour controversy. We will not be showing movies that fail to respect the window. Now then, Regal took a much more measured response, but basically if Universal decides to do what they're going to do, Regal will do the exact same thing as AMC. They're just not saying it in so many words. Now then, uh, what, what did they say? Well, this is what they say. Their statement was, Cineworld's policy with respect to the window is clear, well known in the industry, and is part of our commercial deal with our movie suppliers. We invest heavily in our cinemas across the globe, and this allows the movie studios to provide customers all around the world to watch the movies in the best experience. There is no argument that the big screen is the best way to watch a movie. Universal... Universal unilaterally chose to break our understanding. It did so at the height of the C virus crisis when our businesses closed, more than 35,000 employees are at home, and when we do not yet have a clear date for the reopening of our cinemas. Definitely highlighting that Universal went rogue on this one. So, um, Mookie Gr Grindinger, I don't know if that's, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Cineworld CEO approached Brian Roberts, the chairman of Comcast, back in the 19th of March after Universal announced that Trolls 2 would be released in breach of the window and told him, among other things, that, quote, nice words from your team are worthless if we cannot trust you as a partner. The message that the media has portrayed is Hollywood breaks the window. Well, this is not true. All our partners called us in a timely manner and told us that in the current situation, they want to shorten window for movies that were already released as cinemas are closing. Most importantly, they all reassured us that there will be no change to their window policy once the cinema business returned. Unfortunately, I missed similar message. I missed a similar message in Universal's announcement. Not only did Universal provide no commitment for the future window, but Universal was the only studio that tried to take advantage of the current crisis and provide a day and date release of a movie that was not yet released. Again, uniformly, the message is Universal did not talk to their partners. Cine Cineworld's roots go back 90 years in the industry and it was always open to showing any movie as long as the rules were kept and not changed by one-sided moves. Today we make it clear again that we will not be showing movies that fail to respect the windows as it does not make e any economic sense for us. So that's so they are firmly stating that. Now we'll get back to that in a second. We have full confidence in the industry's current business model. No one should forget that the theatrical side of this industry generated an all-time record income of $42 billion last year, and the movie distributor's share of this was about $20 billion. Now then, what is their final word on it? Well, their final word is, we make it clear again that we will not be showing movies that fail to respect the windows as it does not make any economic sense for us. So yeah, if... Um, Universal decides, hey, we want to do day and date with Minions. Regal's not showing your movies. We're not showing your, your movies. You will respect the window. Now again, AMC did the nuclear option. And that probably wasn't wise, even hindsight being just a day later. But all the theaters are in agreement. If this... I'm wait Cinemark has not said anything, but I fully expect Cinemark will make an announcement very similar to this. You do this, we will not show your movies. Now, again, this could be interpreted that they will not show any movie that breaks the window. So, okay, maybe Minions breaks the window, it's day and date, but Jurassic World isn't. So Regal will show that, right? Well, I don't know. Because again, the theaters are definitely they definitely do not want this to be the future. And here's the thing, despite the articles writing that they have no power in this because the theaters are closed and streaming is out there and this is just gonna push the movies more to streaming anyway, no, they've got more power than people realize. If they did not have this power, why is it then that like one, like just a couple hours after AMC made their bold statement, Universal backtracked almost immediately. Like, hey, no, no, we weren't saying we were going to do day day for all movies. We were going to have movies on both platforms. Stop taking things out of context. We didn't mean it that way. And yet, 
the way that this announcement was made was in the context of, hey, day and date worked out really good for us, so we're going to continue to do that. The cinemas are all on the same page on this one. Regal might be showing a little bit more tact than AMC, but AMC, you know, probably because they are in some financial difficulty, so they have to be the strongest, made their move, no Universal movies if you do this again. Regal made a very similar statement, and I believe Cinemark will again make a similar statement. I also believe Alamo Drafthouse will be on their side too. Now, will that push some movies towards direct-to-streaming? No. No, because here's the thing. I believe cooler heads will prevail. The fact that Universal backed up so quickly and was quick to say, this is a smear job, we didn't actually mean that when really everybody reading that quote kind of thinks that's what they were getting at, shows that the theaters are still very important to Universal. Again, Trolls World Tour is not the success people are making it out to be. It They're getting about the same amount of money. They, they made it a little bit more because they didn't have to share as much, but other than that, they have taken out multiple distribution models and signed it down to one. It's become a one-and-done thing for the most part. And here's the thing. They're still going to lose money on it. Like, if you can't make a $200, $300 million hit during a time when everyone is stuck at home and no one has anywhere to go, then that shows this isn't going to work in the long run. Also, fun fact. I won't say how, but here's the thing. If it's on streaming right away, that makes the movie so much easier to pirate. So much easier. I'm not actually recommending you do that. I'm just saying. Um, less important people will do that. Now, some people have asked, well, obviously this is a bluff because Warner Brothers is doing this with Scoob and Disney is doing this with Artemis Fowl. So clearly, they just got butt hurt over Trolls World Tour. No, again, what has been the reoccurring theme in all these statements? Universal has not talked to their partners. If the theaters are important to Universal, they need to talk to the theaters. Disney and Warner Brothers have both called the theaters and say, hey, we've got a problem with this movie. We wanted it to be in theaters. We don't know when it's going to be out there. We have to do it digitally. And here's the thing. When theater attendance has to be capped when the theaters reopen... The last thing a movie theater wants to do is show a dud. Artemis Fowl was clearly not going to make a lot of money. Now, when you have 30 screens and you can dedicate two of them to your smaller screens to Artemis Fowl for the few people who want to see it, okay, that's one thing. But when, hey, even those smaller screens you might need for Tenet or Wonder Woman or Mulan because you have to space out the seating for all the auditoriums, then yeah they are probably okay with Artemis Fowl going directly to streaming, especially since they're making it part of a subscription, they're not charging extra for it. So really, it's going to be hard to figure out what Artemis Fowl's value to Disney is in the long run. Scoob might be a little bit different because they are charging a premium to own this one. So if Scoob makes a lot more money, although I doubt it will, it could be argued it's because they will own it. People can buy it to own. But then, again, Scoob might have made $100 million in theaters, and then they could have sold some digital downloads, and then the discs. It doesn't make any sense to cut out the revenue source from the studio's point of view, and yeah, the theaters have every right to protest this. What happened with Trolls is a very unique circumstances. We're not going to be in lockdown forever. So yeah, I am definitely on the theater side. I don't think they can call the bluff too much, but... When people say, like, oh, are you really going to reopen without Fast and the Furious or James Bond or Minions? And it's like, well, James Bond is coming out this year. The other two are coming out next year. And this year, we do have Tenet, Wonder Woman, Mulan, Godzilla, a, a Pixar movie. Yeah, we'll probably be okay. We'll probably be okay. And so we can sacrifice James Bond to the box office gods show that, hey, James Bond doesn't do very hot when it's not in movie theaters, and then you guys can come back to the table and there will be no more talk of breaking the theatrical window. 
it is a dangerous game they're playing. I think cooler heads will prevail. I don't think it's ever even going to get to that point. Because as I speculated yesterday, I think AMC made the announcement they did because Universal did not talk to them about trolls going to VOD in the first place. And then they bragged about the supposed success, which really it isn't a success when you get down to it. And said, hey, they're going to do day and date for movies from now on, again, without talking to the theaters. So AMC says, this is a bad precedent. We're not showing any of your movies until you come to us and you tell us what the heck you're thinking. And we will see if we agree to those terms, which as business partners, they have every right to do. But anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this one. What do you think? Do you agree, disagree? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.